All right, all good? Set up? Yep. All right. So, what do you know already? Um, well, <laughs> hola, como estas? Gracias. Oh, God. This probably sounds familiar. Like you, I've taken a stab at languages a few times. Three years of Chinese in school, of which I remember almost nothing. An attempt at Indonesia in the lasted two weeks. It never stuck. I couldn't keep up the motivation. I didn't have the language gene. I wasn't a little kid anymore, so languages were harder. All this was complete bullshit, I soon found out. But first, a little about me. I'm a 20-year-old digital nomad. For the last year and a half, I've been traveling and living around the world, from Saigon to Barcelona, working wherever I could find Wi-Fi. I lift weights, rock climb, tinker with my diet, take nootropics, read books, and mingle with like-minded people. And apparently I have an addiction with learning things in a month. Last June, I learned to DJ in Prague, and in November, I gained 26 pounds of muscle in a month after a lifetime of failed attempts. And now, I'm in Medellin, Colombia, where I'll do the same with Spanish. Before we get started, it's important to define what exactly I'm shooting for this month. It's easy to get caught up in the word fluency, but what does that really mean? I'm aiming to be functionally conversational, meaning I can have friends who speak no English and get by fine and have normal conversations. But I'm not perfect, and I still don't know some words. It's an ambitious goal for one month, and I'm going to need some help. Luckily, I have a few people to call on. Hello? This is Benny Lewis, author of the most read language learning blog online, Fluent in Three Months. He speaks close to ten languages and has helped tens of thousands learn before, so his advice will be pivotal in my overall learning strategy. Uh, reaching level B1 requires minimal grammar. It, does not, it requires a little bit of grammar, but not a lot. So I would highly recommend for the next month that you do not worry about conjugation and you don't worry about um, getting the masculine and the feminine right. And all of these things that are associated with grammar, these are not going to help you at, uh, in this project. As you go beyond, once you reach that B1 level, then that is when I do recommend people actually get their head into a grammar book to tidy it all up. But if, you, if a lot of your time and energy is put into learning tables to speak correct Spanish, that's going to slow down this project because you want, you want to just express yourself. So I would just say, today I to write. Yesterday I to write. Tomorrow I to write. And it is not correct, but it is completely understandable if you say, hoy yo escribir. Today I to write. So I would try to keep that in mind that your goal as you speak is not to speak correct Spanish, but to speak something in Spanish. What I would do during my intensive projects is at the end of my day, or the, after a study session, I'll open in an Excel sheet and I'll create a list. Left-hand side, first column, left-hand side is Spanish words. Right-hand side is English words. You export that as a CSV file and then you import that CSV file into Anki. And then you have a flashcard that is pre-made by you specific to the words you're learning that day. If you find that the biggest thing holding you back from having comfortable conversations is a lack of vocabulary, then lean towards studying more words related to the topics that you talk about. Um, it, and keep in mind, if you don't like uh, the tutors that you find in person, you have a wealth of online tutors. One thing that I found when I was learning Mandarin in China, in uh, Taiwan, sorry, is I had three or four teachers and I just found I wasn't learning with them as quickly as I could learn. So even though I was in the country that speaks the language, I still got Skype-based lessons because then I had a wider range of teachers and I found the, exactly the right teachers to help me with the project. Luckily, the teacher I found in person was incredible. Is your typical going to? So we have English. Same use in Spanish as English. Yeah, it's, it's a future, short future. It's similar to English. When you say I'm going to Peruja, that's because that's a destination, that's a place. Right. And you can use it uh, like this. So that's for Voy a Yeah. Right? If it's how you say it here, how it's going to be used, how I'm going to hear it. 
that's the how I want to learn it. It's important to note that I'm not deferring to Adrian for what to study when. I've lined up the most important things to learn first, which is why we are already covering I'm going to before I know how to talk about the weather, which usually comes way too early in traditional textbooks. I have a small set of starting, versatile words that I'll be front-loading. These are specifically chosen as they will get the most mileage, but also help me express myself in a wide variety of situations once I add more vocabulary. There are connectors like before, after, but, so, still, yet, because. There are heavy use verbs like tener, ir, estar, ser, and hacer. There are directional words like north, south, left, right, straight, go back, and some coping phrases like please repeat that, how do you say, more slowly please. I've taken a big list of these important words and wrote them down on my window, a makeshift whiteboard. When I know each word cold, I can erase it. Before I start memorizing things too much though, I need to make sure my pronunciation is on point. This will help with listening as well, but it will prevent me from memorizing a word with the English pronunciation in my head and then not recognize it in speech with proper Spanish pronunciation. Luckily, I know just the guy to ask for help. This is Idausa Ness, creator of the Mimic Method. He's famous for speaking with no accent at all in each of his six languages and the rhythmic phonetic song training he uses to hack each language's sounds. Learning pronunciation first speeds up everything else, and Idausa's system is the best out there. You acquire uh, your first language as well as any foreign language through mimicking native speakers. And when I say mimicking, I mean the sounds they make and recreating the sounds they make to communicate. We really get technical and train your ears, train your mouth to be able to create those sounds. So for example, you as an English speaker learning Spanish, how to tune your mouth, the position of your tongue to the vowels and the consonants of Spanish, to the rhythm and cadence of Spanish or speakers in Colombia. And once you have that ability, then all these things that trip up most language learners, like understanding native speakers when they talk fast and being able to communicate fluidly without tripping over your tongue and stuttering, all these kind of core abilities of communication uh, come together once you train that foundation. Most people, when they learn language, they, they learn by paper, they learn how to read and write. And you can think someone learning English, for example, they might know the words, what are you doing in tonight? They might know those words, but then struggle to understand someone like me or you speaking casually like, yo, Connor, what are you doing tonight? You know, because it's different sounds, the different reality of how we speak them and how we write. So this kind of training allows you to process those sounds much quicker and uh, get a better sense of what people are actually saying when they talk every day in the street. We have a musical process where you learn how to articulate the lyrics of a song in Spanish and your goal is to be able to articulate it and to pronounce it with the exact same pronunciation as the original artist, the native speaker who made those lyrics. And what we do is you break it down syllable by syllable and we explain each syllable in detail and then you make your attempt. You have a, we'll do a line by line and then through a process, like you know, it'll take about like 20 to 30 minutes of trying to memorize this sequence of syllables. You don't know what you're saying yet. You're just memorizing the sequence of syllables. Once you have it, you record yourself, submit your recording to us. Then we listen and we pinpoint the exact sound you're mispronouncing. Um, and then we can actually tell you what you're doing wrong with your mouth and what you need to adjust to fix that sound. So to give an example in English, uh, if this, if the lyric was, you know, everybody sit down and we would break that down into its component syllables of e, vri, ba, di, sit, down. And we kind of transcribe those syllables so you can see and listen to each one and then put it to a beat so you everybody sit down, everybody sit down. Then you record yourself. Now, obviously this will be easy to you because you speak English, but if I were um, Colombian, for example, I don't speak English, I might say everybody sit down, everybody sit down. And then we listen and we pinpoint that 
on the word sit, you're saying see. And there's a, the vowel is wrong. So you wouldn't be able to hear that until we point it out. We point it out and say, hey, Connor, you're saying seat instead of sit. This is the physical difference. Observe these diagrams. Your tongue needs to be lowered here. Listen to this audio several times. You'll be able to hear the difference between see and sit. And then um, do drill ABC. And once you think you have it, record yourself again. And the next time around, you're like, everybody sit down. And through that process, you have now tuned your ear to that subtle difference in English between seat, sit, feet, fit, you know, heat, hit, which means that when people talk to you, you can now hear it. When you speak, you can now make it a little better. And uh, it's the iterative process where each time you submit a recording, we're tweaking small parts here and there. And that process of tweaking your ear and tongue goes a long way once you're back out there in the streets listening to everyday Spanish. Now that I have my strategy in place, it's time to set some stakes. I've got a lot of motivation already, but this project requires an extra kick in the ass. This is Brian Kwong, founder of the Add One Challenge, a language learning accountability community that has helped hundreds stick to their language learning goals. Given the magnitude of my challenge, I'm going to need some serious accountability, and Brian's just the guy to help. So, okay, now we got the end goal. Now we got to break it down. So you have 30 days. So you already said speaking for three hours. What I'll be doing is I'll be having a private tutor for three hours a day. Okay. And then I'll be doing, at least in the first week, probably two hours of the Dallas program a day, just up front. Um, and then some vocabulary training through Anki. So now we're breaking down the accountability. So if we don't know exactly how much you're going to do, we can't hold you accountable. That's why I'm asking you this question. So now I got three hours of speaking, two hours of Itasa's program. That's five hours. Correct. If there's no, there's no, there's nothing at stake, then you, then you can just like, oh, I didn't do it. You know, then, you know, so you have something that's painful or hugely rewarding, usually, you know, some people are more motivated by, by punishment, some people are more motivated by rewards, but most, some people can have both. So what works for you in terms of putting something at stake? I think I need like a major sting if I don't follow through. Ooh, so what is that sting? Tell me, what is that sting? If I do not follow through on any given day, it's $500 that I'll send you. $500 each day? If I don't make it out any day, if I miss three days, that's fifteen hundred dollars. Oh wow! Well, you got the goal. We got what your weekly goal is and what to hold you accountable for. We got something at stake. Now the next part is to tell everybody. So now all your friends know about this, not just me. Now that I have so much money on the line, it's time to get to work. One, two, three, four, done. This process may look a bit weird. What am I really achieving here? But it works. Pretty Dallas' promises, after two weeks of doing this two hours a day, slowly tuning my tongue and ear, my pronunciation is on point. But more importantly, I understand people when they speak. It'll take some time to work up the speed, but I'm having limited conversations now without too much trouble. With pronunciation on point and basic grammar in place, I began adding vocabulary. By walking on the treadmill, I improved my recall and reduced boredom. Now I'm ready for the halfway milestone conversation to track my progress. Bueno, Connor. <laughs> bueno. ¿Dónde vive el bus? El bus? Usted. ¿Dónde vive usted? Ah, Estados Unidos. ¿En qué parte? Y Florida. 
Florida. Sí. ¿Con quién vive? Con vive mi, no vive ahora. Mi, mi familia vive en uh, Key West. Key West. Es en is, isla sur de Miami. Sí. Sí. Uh, ¿Y aquí con quién está? En Medellín. ¿Con quién? Por cuatro meses. ¿Solo? Uh, <ríe> ¿Está solo o con alguien? ¿Alguna persona solo. más? ¿Solo? Solo. Solo. ¿Hace cuatro meses? Cuatro meses. Eh, primera vez. ¿Primera vez? Sí. ¿Y qué tal le parece? ¿Qué? ¿Cómo le parece? ¿Cómo te parece? ¿Cómo le parece Medellín? ¿Cómo es? Yo me gusta. ¿Le gusta? ¿Qué le gusta? <risa> ¿Qué? ¿Qué le gusta? ¿Y es, ¿Es muy diferente de Estados Unidos o solo Europa y obviamente Asia? La, la cultura es más... Más, más, mo... abierto. Abierta. Abierta, caliente. ¿La cultura o el clima? La cultura. Es más diferente, o sea, es muy diferente. Sí, sí. Es, es mejor. ¿Aquí? Sí, es... Estos son más... You may have noticed that I made quite a few mistakes, but I don't regret a single one of them. In fact, if I hadn't been willing to make lots of mistakes, that conversation would have never happened. So let's talk about the thing holding back millions of language learners. Perfection. With any language, there are two main milestones. Communication and perfection. Fluency. In 30 days, you can go from nothing to expressing almost any idea. You can communicate almost any idea after 30 focus days. The mistake most people make is they try to be perfect. And when you try to be perfect, this is how far you can get in 30 days. Get to hear first and be able to express any idea, and then worry about refining that towards perfection. To illustrate this, I had two tutors. The first one wanted to help me communicate first, and the other, perfection. The perfection teacher was worried about conjugations for every verb, which past tense was best for different situations, gender, and other details that aren't necessary for communicating. Whereas for communicating, you need to conjugate less than 10 verbs, and you only need one past, one future, which you hack by using I'm going to instead of I will, and one present. If you screw up the gender, someone is still going to understand you. Once you can communicate, then you can worry about perfection. But if you try to be perfect, it'll be a long time before you can ever truly communicate. Es, es solo para, para es, emociones. Sí. Ah, no, es el verbo poner. Eh, ¿Qué es poner? Put. What? To put something. I was going. Yo, I was going. Yeah. Yo estaba yendo. Ya estaba yendo. Yendo. Yes. I It's 4 a.m. on a Wednesday. And I am doing my mimic method. Because I'm an idiot. And I put it off until really late. And, um, well, when you have $500 of accountability on the line, you choose getting the work done, getting the training in, doing the practice, over losing $500. This is more ideal than back and forth with text, because this is training your listening skills and it's training your, uh, it's training your skills in speaking. So you're actually having a conversation even though it's over messaging. If you don't understand something, you can play the message over and over again, back and forth. Um, this is way better than texting back and forth with your teacher. I'm consistently finding that the lack of vocabulary is the biggest thing holding me back. As I'm not quite done with the Dowsis pronunciation program, Brian agreed to letting me change those two hours into vocabulary training, as long as I finish the program by the end. 
For those unfamiliar, I'm training my vocabulary using an SRS, or Spaced Repetition System. It's like normal flashcards, but after you get something right, you don't see it again for a day. The next time, four days, the next time, 20 days, then two months, and so on. Getting it wrong brings it right back to the start. The point is, you see a word just before you're about to forget it, which is a point where recalling the word creates the strongest memory. There's a lot of research on SRSs, and it's one of the most efficient and effective ways to memorize lots of information, especially vocab. It's important to put English on the front, as you want to train recall, not recognition. If you can generate the word from memory, you can recognize it, but usually not the other way around. not all roses. There's an interesting dichotomy going on with my tutor being really happy with my progress and thinking that I'm doing amazing and me just being frustrated with not being able to say or understand the things I want to say that not, or understand. And it sort of seems to flop between this day in and day out. So I knew all of this would be mentally exhausting, but I really underestimated how physically exhausting all of the studying and all of this speaking uh, would be. I find that almost every day I have to take a nap for two hours. And the flip-flop between good days and bad days continues. Uh, I had a couple really, really great days, um, but the last two or three days have felt uh, like my Spanish is where it was you know, a week ago or more. And this is something I haven't brought up yet <clears throat> but i'm not only doing spanish right now i'm still working i still have clients i'm still working just like any other person this is not a one month of complete focus on spanish despite the fact that i'm spending five hours or more per day i still have other stuff <laughs> It's 1 a.m. on the last day, and my accountability was I had to finish the mimic method before the end of the month. And I'm an idiot, and I procrastinated, and I put all the shit off to the last couple of days, and here I am last night trying to get it done and it's late and I'm fucking slurring all of my words and uh, there's absolutely zero chance of me finishing this tonight and that means I owe Brian $500 Well, the challenge is over. $1,350 spent on 90 hours of tutoring, 150 bucks for the pronunciation course, and now $500 paid to Brian for failing my accountability. Let's see if it was all worth it. Good boy, Juan. Good boy, Juan. How are you? Good. Bien, muchas gracias. How are you? Good. David. 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 Connor. El famoso Connor. The famoso? The famoso Connor. Sí, porque no. es gay. No. No. Es verdad. ¿Sí o no? <risa> <risa> bueno, bueno. Una advertencia, parce. No, ya. No, ya, ya. No soy ni puta. <risa> ¿Y hace cuánto vives en Medellín, Connor? Oh, ¿Cuánto ¿Hace tiempo? cuánto estás en, en Medellín? Como te llegué hace cinco semanas solo. ¿Cinco semanas? Sí. Excelente. ¿Y cu hasta cuándo te quedas? ¿Cuándo te, te vuelves a Estados Unidos? Mm, pff, ¿Volver a Estados Unidos? 
Nunca. No. <risa> Va a seguir. No, no da... en, en uh, noviembre. Pero en, uh, voy a Asia, Bangkok, ah. en, en la medio de octubre, por una conferencia. Ah. Sí. Wow. ¿Viajar por todo el mundo? Sí. ¿Por qué no? ¿A, a qué más países ha sido Connor? ¿Qué más? Eh. Ah. Y 35. 35, ¿qué? 35 países. Sí. Wow. <risa> Un poquito. Hijo. Ese, ese es un muy, buena, muy buen proyecto de vida. <risa> y, y Panamá. Ah, Panamá y Honduras, solo. ¿Usted? ¿Usted conoce Honduras? Sí, pero solo, solo lo jungle. ¿Sí? Sí. Yo, yo volé a San Pedro Sulo, ah. pero solo en la ciudad por un día es... Ah, de todo, paso. Todo, todo el otro tiempo es, es caminando en, en la jungle. Sí, y eso. Ah, que, que está, la ciudad estaba haciendo un documental, ¿o qué? No, no, la documental, todo es, es, es una nueva cosa. Pero en la jungla, entonces, ¿qué hacían en la jungla? ¿Qué? Porque estuviste caminando en la jungla. De excursión. Por, por divertido. Ah, divertido. <risa> no rezan. <risa> <risa> Excelente. Yo, Pan Yo fui a Panamá solo cinco días. Sí. ¿Te gusta? No. No, me, no me gustó. No. <risa> Empezando que fui con un hermano mío que se llama Adrián, sí. que ya había ido a esa ciudad y él decía que la conocía. Sí. Y nos perdíamos, nos perdimos. Entonces yo hacía, lo, lo único que hacía era manejar el carro todo el día porque mi hermano no, no sabía dónde quedaba nada. Entonces para ir a, a buscar un, una hamburguesa a McDonald's, Uh, en Panamá probablemente es no bueno que quedaba cerquita nos demorábamos una hora y media porque nos perdíamos mi hermano estaba desubicado sí. entonces es mejor ir solo Connor cuenta con un nivel conversacional eh, avanzado lo cual le permite comunicarse e interactuar muy bien con personas nativas. Look, nothing I did is special. All I did is focus on the things we know work. Lots of speaking with a native, SRS training, understanding that language is just sound, learn the most useful grammar and vocab first, focus on communication, not perfection, and then just put in the time. I spent about 150 hours this month. And I've seen that number with these methods be about true for others coming to a conversational level, whether you do it in one month, three, or six. You don't need a better piece of software. You need to talk to a real human. Esta noche te...